we really started uh, raising money in earnest somewhere around Memorial Day. And I don't think anybody thought that, I'm gonna move General Christmas's notes somewhere else here. I don't think that anybody thought that within nine months we would he be here at groundbreaking. But I've got to tell you that I'm not surprised at all by it because I think that Stafford County has a tradition of kindness and generosity. And I have seen that uh, happen time and time again in this, in this county during my lifetime. And I think it started in the aftermath of the Civil War where there was a, a great deal of devastation. The Union Army was here for some three and a half years and the devastation was huge. Uh, in fact, when people came back from the war, they just kept on going because there was nothing left here in Stafford County. It truly was one of the poorest counties in the nation. George Gordon, the Commissioner of Revenue for some 57 years and great historian, the admin building there is named for him. This is the way he described it. He said that when the Great Depression came in the 1930s in this nation, Stafford County was so poor they didn't even notice it was a depression. <laughs> Fast forward to 2016, some five months after we started raising money, in October, we had raised the $675,000, which was our bare bones initial goal. Now, subsequent to that, we've increased it to $838,000 because of some structural and safety requirements as well as aesthetic requirements. We, at this point, are mere $100,000 short of our goal. In being the country boy that I, I am, I never have used the term mere $100,000. That's, that's new language for me, I can tell you. This memorial, as General Christmas has pointed out, honors all that has served our country, all the people who have carved out and then preserved the freedoms that each one of us enjoy. These are the freedoms that make this country unique in all the world. It honors the people that, as I describe it, who have signed the blank check. And the blank check is a willingness to give everything you have for this country, including your life. That's what this memorial honors. It honors everybody from the Revolutionary War right on to the War on Terror. And as General Christmas has pointed out, it also honors the families of those that stayed behind. I think it's more than that, though. I think it is a venue in which people can come to bring their families, bring their children. Teachers can come and bring their students. Families can come here to reflect. And what needs to be taught, in my opinion, is the connection between the freedoms that we enjoy on a daily basis and those who are honored today who fought to preserve those freedoms. Maybe, just maybe, had that principle been taught and is being taught, then maybe you would not have the situation that you had when Vietnam veterans came back to this country and some perceived coming back to an ungrateful country and it was not an unjustified perception. They came back to communities that did not understand them, that did not understand what they had been through and were not particularly welcoming. It seems to me that the hurt caused by that in many, many Vietnam veterans will be lessened to a degree by a memorial such as this. Now, let me make one thing clear. I did not suffer when I came home from that. I came back to a family whose my brothers had all served in the United States Army. I came back to a community that was welcoming. 
and understanding. I was very, very lucky because I came back to Stafford County. Now, who do we thank for the creation of such a memorial? Certainly the Lamar family, whose idea was presented to the Board of Supervisors, and certainly to this Board of Supervisors, who did what I don't believe would happen in every other jurisdiction and among every other governing bodies. They decided to honor all veterans. And members of the board, for that I salute you. They not only provided financial help, but they provided administrative help, which has been very, very important to the creation of this memorial and to bringing it to a reality today. They created the commission, including General Christmas, as well as this working group that I'm a part of. And with General Christmas's guidance, this working group has done much of the heavy lifting. Now, I, I cannot resist talking about General Christmas a little bit. I really have never worked with generals before. When I was overseas and when I was in the Army, uh, generals didn't associate with me. And uh, actually, the 12 and a half months I was overseas, I was waiting for General Westmoreland to give me a call. Daniel, come on down to Saigon and give me some advice. Uh, the call never came. But working with General Christmas, has been a delight. He is a dynamo. He doesn't take no for an answer. He doesn't understand failure. Well, wait a minute now, hold on. Let me go back on that. His lovely wife, Sherry, is right here. Now, she did say something about failure. She said that General Christmas simply has failed retirement. <laughs> failed retirement. The beneficiary of General Christmas's failing retirement has been the people of Stafford County. Now, I was musing the other day that, you know, militarily speaking, General Christmas's failing retirement has been the best thing that's happened to Stafford County since the Union Army packed up their bags and got out of town. <laughs> General Christmas is a great fundraiser. I am not. But there were two incidences in my fundraising activities that were very moving to me. And if you would give me a moment, I would like to describe them a bit to you. Somewhere in the area of uh, Memorial Day, uh, I called Larry Silva on the phone. And uh, he, as you, some of you know, is the head of the Silva uh, Company. And, and they are developers here in the Fredericksburg Stafford area, as well as in Florida. And I explained to him the categories of giving, founder, $100,000, uh, and, and right on down the line. And uh, I explained to him what we were doing, the categories of giving, and uh, he asked me a lot of questions about it. And after a long conversation, he says, I'll give I'll be the founder, I'll give the $100,000, and I'll do it in honor of my father, Carl D. Silva. Some of you know that Carl D. Silva started the company and has done a lot of development also. What you may not realize about Carl D. Silva, though, he is a self-made man who is a veteran of World War II, having served in the European theater, having been wounded, and having been a Bronze Star recipient. Now, the second incident is when, is about October of uh, 2016. I called a young man by the name of David Garrison, who's here today, and he is the grandson of a gentleman who was also a developer here, Russell Sullivan. And Russell Selwyn did a lot of develop, development in the area, and unfortunately we lost him about three years ago. His widow, Mabel, is here, I'm happy to say. And, and Russell 
epitomized to me the idea of being generous and, and giving. And so when I talked to David, he asked me a lot of questions about the memorial after I explained it. And it truly was a, a bit of a cross-examination that she was on the other foot here now. And what he was really driving at is, was this memorial really going to be built? Finally, he asked me, how much have you raised and how much have you got to raise? And I told him, well, we've raised about $625,000. We're about $50,000 short. He said, well, we'll cover that. And he did. And the family of Russell Sullivan has, in addition, uh, given us $10,000 more. And so I thank you both for what you've done for this endeavor. Now, Now, Russell Selvin, to me, uh, I remembered in my youth as a baseball player. That was very, baseball was pretty important to me. I was going to be in the major leagues, but I couldn't hit the ball. You know, that's a, <laughs> when you can't hit a ball and you want to be a baseball player, that's a, that's a big obstacle. But anyway, um, he was the first major leaguer from Stafford County. He played for the Detroit Tigers. But then I did a little more digging. And this is what I found out about Russell Selvin. He was in, he was also a World War II veteran. He was in the Pacific Theater. He was a gunner on a dauntless dive bomber. Now I can tell you from my experience overseas, that is not a comfortable position to be in. And uh, if you want to see a dauntless dive bomber, there's one up at the Marine Corps Museum. Anyway, uh, another World War II veteran. Now, all of these people that I've mentioned, I thank for what they have done, uh, particularly the folks that in the courthouse here that have worked very hard for this. But the real reason that we are here is you. You have given support to this endeavor. You have given resources to this endeavor. And I thank you so much for it. Indeed, you have continued the tradition of giving and kindness that started many years ago here in this county. Thank you very, very much.